everybody, it's Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this cracker gift box. I was actually looking for tea online and I saw a box very similar to this which had loads of lovely different like specialty teas in it and I thought well I know how to make a cracker so let's make a cracker gift box and this is the size I've done. Now inside here are four walnut whips, so these so you can get four of them in there so it makes a really nice little gift. It's a great size, it's four by four by three and a half but you also have that extra bit of height here as well so you can certainly get quite a bit in there and it's really easy to make so let me show you how. Okay so I'm using the Almost Christmas, I just love this, it's working so well for my Christmas projects this year and this time I'm using so the same paper for the top but I'm using this one here with our lovely baubles and you've got the robin and the mistletoe You've got a rose there and a wreath, so it's a really pretty design and um, I think it's going to work really well. So I've already done one half, so this is what we're going to achieve. This look here, I'm going to do two of these. So you'll want two pieces of cardstock that are eight and a quarter, so this is A4. Okay, so it's a default A4 piece, so it's eight and a quarter by eleven and three quarters, eleven and five eighths, okay. So along the eight and a quarter side, you want to score at four and eight. So you're going to have a quarter of an inch tab, which is plenty. And then rotate it so that tab's at the bottom. And you're then going to score at four, seven and a half, nine and a half, and then nine and three quarters. So don't worry if your A4 is, you know, um, 11 and three quarters or 11 and five eight. You might even have 12 inch length. It won't matter. All it means is that this top bit here is a little bit bigger. The only thing, you might have more bigger border when you go to put your mat layer down but it shouldn't really make too much of a difference. You basically do that twice, okay? Then you want to fold and burnish all your score lines on both of your pieces. And then with these score lines here, I've got a, a colour core cardstock, so, um, and it's a Craft UK one, it doesn't crack. So I'm actually, I've done all of those as a mountain fold, but these two here, I've done both as a valley. You see, so they're kind of like that. Don't worry too much, but let's get it into that shape because that's how it's going to be when we start to fold it all together. So when you've done that with both of them, you want to do a little bit of cutting. Now actually I think it's going to be best if you mark with a pencil first. So what we do is you want to mark, you're going to be working on these two score lines here. So it was the nine and a half and the nine and three quarter. Working within this section here, it's, a four, it's four inches wide. Okay, there's my four inch marker which runs down that middle score line. So you want to just put a pencil mark at one and three quarters and two and a quarter on the top line and then just mark the same on the bottom line. I'll just bring that up there. You see my two pencil marks? There we go. So I've done it on the bottom line and on the top line. Okay, what we're creating, just so it makes some sense, is this, this shape here. Okay, because we're going to be cutting all of this. So you've done it in that section, then bring your ruler across to this section here. Again, you can see it's four inches. So I'm going to mark at one and three quarters and two and a quarter on the top line. And then I'm just copying that again on the second line. Okay, just make them out. You can rub all these out. Then what you want to do is pop it on its side. And on the top here, is just mark one inch. So that's a one inch section there. You want to do one inch on that middle score line and you want to do one inch on the end here as well. Okay, so you can just see you've got a little pencil mark there, there and just at the end there. Next you want to fold this piece in half, okay. So I've got this facing me. That Where you've marked on this middle score line, make sure you can see the pencil from both sides. Now what you want to do is we're working, you'll have this section, this little thin section and this section. The big, two big squares ignore, okay, keep them away from you. You're just working from here. So the top, this score line here, so the top of the second big square, that's where you want to start cutting and you're going to cut across up to that first pencil line on that bottom score line. Okay, so you can just see there's that fold there, you can see what I've just done. I'm going to change between scissor sticks. Now I'm going to bring in my little snips because what you want to do is just snip up to that next pencil line just across there, okay? 
and then I'm going to come in again with these and from that one inch pencil line you're going to come across and just join that up and then just snip that away. Now don't worry if it's a little bit maybe not so great there because you're going to cover all that with your ribbon. And then if you come around to this side ignore the tab for the minute because in fact what you can do is with your snips is just cut across that tab to meet up with that little one inch pencil mark that you would have there okay and then you want to do the same so this time we're starting from the top so now we're going to start from that pencil mark and we're going to come across to that pencil line there so it's going to start the paper's going to start to get a bit floppy now but you're doing it right so don't worry and then Again, I'm just going to come in with my snips just to cut across that section there and then you're just now going to cut down and what you can do here because you're actually going to start to create a tab is just cut straight across and just keep going across that tab that's overhanging because now you just put a little angle on it a notch which is what you need to do in a minute anyway so now if I open this up you should have this and you want this tab piece left on here and you've started to already create the tab here. So now we can just finish off along the bottom here. You want to cut up that score line just to the middle one there, the first one. And then this section, you want to remove all of it and then just on an angle, just come in like so. So now we've created this little tab. And it's this tab here and this tab here that we're going to use to connect it to the other piece. But now, you should have one half of your cracker box. Now you want to do that twice, you've got obviously two pieces and then whilst they are flat you want to stick these pieces on. So I've got the fourth. I'll bring this piece in now because we can start doing all of the other mats and layers as well. And I'll show you how to cut that shape. So these ones here you're going to want four pieces. The width is three and three quarters and the height is three and a quarter. So make sure if it's directional, you're getting your height there on the three and a quarter measurement. And then you're just gonna stick these across those four sections. So I've done those two, so I'm just gonna pop these two down. Okay, so while that's drying, I've then got, so it's actually the reverse of this pattern which I'm using to mat the top sections here. So to get this shape, you wanna cut four pieces that are one and five eighths by three and three quarters. Okay, you only need to do this on one of them. Turn it over and with a pencil, you wanna mark the halfway point along the long side, which is one and seven eighths of an inch. I'm just putting a pencil mark at one and seven eighths. And then you wanna come down each side three quarters of an inch. So I know you can't really see this because of the pattern, but I'm just coming down there three quarters of an inch. And then with my scissors, I'm going to cut from the three quarters of an inch right over to the centre there. And again from the centre up to that three quarters of an inch. And you'll have this now that will fit nicely and give you that border. Then with that one, just line it up on the next piece and just draw around. Just, well, you can draw around it or cut around it, but it saves you having to use your ruler each time. And then I'd already done that one there. But now I've got those four and I'm going to stick them down. Now you may want to stick these down when you put it all together because it's worthwhile putting kind of a little bit of a shape into this because you'll see that's the kind of way that it ends up kind of folding. It's got that curve to it. So it's up to you. I mean, if you're using the clow, you've got a bit of wiggle room. I'm going to leave these and stick them on at the end and I'm just going to put some shape into them now. But you might find it a little bit more fiddly putting it on when it's together and you might prefer to do it now so either way do what works best for you but they're all ready now for when I go to stick them down and then all you want to do now is stick these pieces together I'm just going to take a little wedge off of each corner there like so I'm just going to pop a bit of glue there If you would rather have a bigger tab, then have a piece of eight and a half and just score at four and eight and you'll have a half inch. But I've used quarter inch on lots of 3D projects and um, it's fine. And But you know, this has got very lightweight gifts in it and this is actually going to my neighbor. So I'm gonna pop it on the front doorstep. Just rub out the pencil there and just make sure that your base score line lines up. All of this you can 
you know cut and trim and do whatever with but the base if you get that off if you focus on the top and then your base is off then you've messed up the whole project it's much easier to rectify any of this and then I'm just going to flip it over fold this one side over and pop my glue again on these two tabs and then I'm going to fold over this half and it should all line up perfectly so if you're a little bit off there you can trim it but I'm really not worried by the time it all when it's folded together and you've got the ribbon and all the decoration no one's going to notice any of those things but if you do want to get rid of any of the pencil marks then just rub those out okay and then you can open it up decide which way or which part you want to be the front and the back because you're going to have a join on both sides so I think I'm going to go with this as the front I'm just looking at the design really um, yeah I'm going to go for that one so this is going to be the last one I stick down so I'm going to pop down this one first if you want to take some wedges off the sides of these you can or you can trim it all when it's all together it either way you know it doesn't matter do what works best for you fold one half down and you could put a nice candle in this because you've got four layers of cardstock that you're now you know sticking on top of each other and with this strong glue this will become a really strong base so you could definitely put something with a bit of weight inside this one and then just fold the last one down there pop it on its side make sure it's in its you know you get it all square and then you can just push down on that glue like so and then you should just be able to push that all in it will very easily go into that shape so what I'm going to do now is pop in these now. I must confess I've only got three because I've eaten one, so I will buy another one. But if you pop them side by side, they will all fit in there. You can see there's plenty of room for the last one. But now I'm just going to pop my ribbon and then I'm just going to tie off my bow. And then I'm just going to trim off these. I didn't put my tag on, I put my tag on before I put the ribbon on last time. So I'm just going to feed that through there. I mean, you kind of get the idea. I need to take this all apart again anyway, but I'll just um, see if I can just get it underneath here, feed it through. I'm just going to just seal the ends of my ribbon there. And this little tag is one of my favourites at the moment. I'm really liking it. I've used it on a few projects. You can see there and then I can just write on the back of that. I've got a lovely silver um, gel pen and also your white gel pens then you'll be able to obviously see everything on there. Also another thing I wanted to mention before I stick those last bits down is when you have it flat before you actually stick it together if you've got any edge punches you could have a decorative top there but because I'm putting the matte layer having that and then the matte layer I just don't I think it would have looked a bit too much you would have seen the matte layer there would have probably interfered with the the detail of it but if you don't want to put those mats on then you could do that and that would be a nice effect but now I'm just going to stick these all on because I've put the little shape into them it just means that they sit much nicer so if you just kind of pinch one side and then just let it curve into that shape you can wiggle it around a little bit but that's there, I'm just going to hold that there for a second ok so there's the finished box you can see now all those matte layers and then my tag which I just love and I've put some little bells on there as well with some hot glue but you can just open it up now, pop your gifts in and that's all ready to uh, go to my neighbours. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. As always I'll link all of the product that I've used in the description box and I'll be back very soon with more packaging ideas. Thanks for watching. Bye!